Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Larson, and I'm the Educational Strategies Director here at Schoology. Uh, believe it or not, I'm literally at the edge of my seat with excitement because I'm going to have a chance to walk you through a glimpse of what's possible in Schoology. Uh, in my last 12 years and as, as an instructor and then in various support roles, I, I don't think I've been able to see a product tie together all the various needs of different users into one easy-to-use platform. Uh, well, with that bold statement, let, let's get started. The first perspective that we're going to look at is from an instructor, and this is Dr. Lawrence. He's been a professor for the last eight years teaching anatomy and physiology and basic biology, and he wants to create a blended learning environment for his students, and, and that's really because of two reasons. One, he wants his instruction to be enhanced. He's, he's tired of the kind of the old way of just posting uh, the PowerPoint or providing PDFs. He wants more engagement with students through the learning management system. And secondly, his students have expectations. They're coming to his classroom wanting more than a stage-on-the-stage stage type experience. And he's excited because school is new to his institution, and he's wanting to leverage it in his classroom to really create this blended learning environment. But obviously, he has a little bit of an issue with that, especially with 300-plus lecture halls being his main format of teaching. So we're going to dive into Schoology and see how he's leveraging it to really meet his classroom needs. And the first thing I want to mention is the, the home page. So whenever a user logs into Schoology, this is what they're going to see. It's a familiar three-column layout that uh, is automatically recognizable by a broad variety of users. Uh, most, most users actually start using Schoology without any training at all. It's, it's that kind of simple. Uh, on the left-hand side is the navigation for the overall uh, Schoology experience. In the middle is the recent activity, the things that happened in Dr. Lawrence's course and groups while he was gone. And on the right-hand side are the reminders and upcoming events that are associated, again, with him as a user. Uh, even from this home page, you can see that there are some comments made by some of his students. There's some uh, un ungraded assignments that he needs to look over and even be able to see some of the discussion groups that are happening uh, in the future. But for today, we're going to spend some time looking at his actual course and what he does um, in that location. So I go with the courses, and I can see that there's two courses that Dr. Lawrence is actually a part of. He's in anatomy and physiology. He has section one and section two. So even though they're separate sections, um, they're combined into one course, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But then secondly, he's also uh, the instructor of a biology course. So he can access, of course, all of his courses in one location. But let's go into anatomy and physiology. And at the very top, you can actually see that this is section one and section two. Uh, Dr. Lawrence doesn't want to have to go to separate courses to post his content, have discussions, grade papers. He wants all those things to happen in one course. So with our course um, a section linking, uh, we allow that kind of functionality. And this, by the way, is the course page. So in Schoology, we have a course page where when a user comes into a course uh, through the SIS integration, um, their users already entered into a course, um, both the instructor and the student. This is what they see when they get this course. On the left-hand side is um, navigation that's specific to this uh, area. In the middle is the content that's associated with the course. And on the right-hand side are the reminders and upcoming events, again, that are specifically associated with his course. Now, Dr. Lawrence has two things that are really happening in this anatomy and physiology. Uh, one is that he does have a lecture style. Uh, class that he conducts, but he also has a lab um, experience that he um, has happening as part of this course as well. I'm going to show you a little bit about what that looks like. If I go down to week three, and actually I'm going to select this week three folder, this is the where the content begins. Um, so he has his lecture folder, he has lab work folder, and then he even has a skeleton test, which is a part of our assessment management platform that I think we'll talk about towards the end. But I specifically wanted to go into this lecture folder and show you some of the content that's here. Um, but before I start looking at this specific content, I want to show you a big differentiator between Schoology and a lot of other platforms. And that's the ease in which you, uh, an instructor can actually create content. So I'm within a week three folder, and I'm in this lecture area, and I want to add, let's say, a discussion. All I have to do is simply drag my mouse over that area and select. And a pop-up window happens that tells me what do I want to add. So if I want to add a folder, an assignment, test, discussion, a page, um, even if I have some integrated content like Merlot, all that would be available right here to be able to add in or Google Drive or Dropbox. 
And for today, I'm, so, I'm just going to select discussion. Now, when I select discussion, this is what an instructor sees. They get a pop-up window. It doesn't take them to a new uh, tab. It doesn't take them to a whole new window. Uh, they don't get lost. Uh, it's simply a pop-up window. At any time, they can close out of this and go back to where they currently were. Um, also, if an instructor can write an email, they can create a discussion. Um, simply put in the title, put in the description, and at the bottom, there's a couple of buttons that allow for maybe individually assigning it to a certain group of students or maybe to a section. Do I want this graded? Do I want uh, students to be able to post first before seeing other student submissions? All that's available right here. And, and a lot of you guys who have used some of the other learning management systems out there, you'll notice the difference. There's not another tab that they have to select. There's not another window that they have to go to. All that they need for creating this discussion is right here and accessible. I'm going to cancel this for, for today because I've already had some content that's created that I want to show you. We're going to start off with um, our page. Um, and this is a page that's created in Schoology that allows an instructor to be able to put in text, embed maybe a Prezi uh, presentation. Uh, underneath that is a YouTube video. Our rich text editor allows for a lot of content to be created right within the platform um, to be able to be leveraged with the students in, in a course. If I go to the next button to show you the next kind of item, this is a link. So this specific link is to a Google Doc. Google Docs or Microsoft uh, Word documents online act in, as, as almost wikis within our platform so that you can be able to have a content that's collaborated on uh, jointly, uh, that revision history can be stored, and it all happens right here in the Schoology experience while leveraging those outside tools. This is one of the things that really sets Schoology apart. We want to be the best platform that brings in all the various tools that you use into one place. That's something that's really important to us, and hopefully you'll appreciate that as we can continue to go through. The next item that I want to go to is an actual discussion, and this is the first of the interactive type experiences that are found within Schoology, and which I actually created an example of um, in, in kind of a little bit ago. Uh, discussion forums are a great place for conversations to happen across an entire course of users. Um, the big thing that I, I hear time and time again is that instructors, especially an instructor like a Dr. Lawrence with 300 students, they get frightened about the idea of actually having to respond to 300 students having a discussion about maybe a lecture that happened. The good thing about discussion forums is that it allows a place for students to have a conversation. This one, for instance, is just a peer-to-peer -peer forum. So students are talking to other students about the learning that's happening in that class. Now, whether you like it or not, that discussion happens. Uh, whether or not you provide it in a location like a Schoology or in some other place, um, is up to you. But the nice thing with this forum is that not only can students respond to other posts and make their own original posts, but you can also moderate these so that you can choose to allow posts to be made or, or not. Um, and you can also have word filters and various things associated with it too. So that's a really nice way about the discussion forum. Not to mention the, the great functionality too, which we're not going to get into today. Next is in a, a, a test within Schoology, tests allow for uh, around six or seven various question types with this, within this coming year. We're going to be adding 15 more question types to that, like hotspot questions, uh, drag and drop, number lines, a lot of different options that are going to be available. But it's a very quick and easy way for a, an instructor to actually create an assessment and be able to see the results in one aggregated location. And by the way, if, if this um, Dr. Lawrence has his two different sections within this area, he could be able to, from here, go from one section to the next. Uh, so it's a really powerful way for him to have everything in one place. And the last thing I want to talk about from the instructor perspective um, in terms of content is an assignment. Assignment is another way that provides interaction between the instructor and the student, but specifically in a one-on-one -on -one kind of way. Uh, so obviously within this assignment, they has the ability to upload uh, maybe their direction, um, uh, post uh, the, the rubric that's going to be used to assess the student, be able to actually have a discussion about the assignment here in this area, and then on the right-hand side, be able to see all the submissions that were currently made. You know, a lot of um, other learning management systems, it, this has to be done with three or four different content items. With Schoology, we allow an instructor to create an assignment in one place with the directions, with the rubric, with the discussion, and with a place to actually submit that work all in one place. 
And let me actually show you how this grading works. Um, so here's one submission specifically from Matthew. This is our uh, document viewer right within Schoology. Uh, this doesn't require any additional add-on. Uh, this is all part of the standard package. And this is a Matthew's work where he actually took a picture of, of a skull here and submitted that. Again, this is anatomy and physiology course, so this is a per perfectly normal kind of submission for this class. Uh, but from here, Dr. Lawrence can make use of our commenting and annotation tool. And he can do that directly upon that image or that PDF or the PowerPoint or the video or whatever that might be. He can make those kind of things right here. Um, in addition to the, the commenting in our document viewer, he can also use the rubric that was associated with this. So if I simply click, clicking on the rubric, he can see the different standards that are associated with this, be able to select which ones he wants, and then simply save that for the student to be able to review. Um, the nice thing about the rubric here that I want to mention, because this is, again, a big differentiator between us and other products, is that our rubric identifies standards separately. So even though the overall score was, let's say, an 80, that doesn't mean the student made an 80 on every single standard. Maybe they made a 4 on the first and maybe a 1 on the last. Schoology will recognize in the mastery area, which I'll show you in a second, um, the differentiation between that. Their overall score does not mean that's what they got on each standard. Hopefully that makes sense, but I know it's something we can talk more through, um, talk through more if we have a specific conversation with you guys. The last thing I want to talk about from the assignment tool is really the ability to also have overall kind of um, discussions with the students about the work that they've done, even to the point where I can use an audio video recorder right within the platform to comment to the student. All this is happening in Schoology. The instructor is not having to download anything, upload anything. All this is happening right here from Schoology. And by the way, this is also accessible from an iPad, an Android, a Kindle Fire, whatever kind of device that you have, this experience is available for you. I just cancel out of that. I want to go back to the, the course area because there's a couple of tabs that I think are important for you uh, as an instructor to be able to, be able to see. Uh, Dr. Lawrence, like I said, he really wants to make sure that he's enhancing his, the learning experience that's happening. So he makes use of the mastery tab. The mastery tab is an aggregation of the various the content that students are interacting with, whether that's an assignment, a discussion, or a test. Anytime they're tied to standards, they aggregate into the mastery area. So at a quick glance, he can see that, you know what, um, AP 1.3, that kind of vertical column there, there might be a problem with maybe the, an answer key, or maybe that's something that he didn't cover enough in class. It allows him to know as an instructor what he needs to be able to improve on. But if you look at kind of the horizontally, he can also see that, you know, Eric, um, both Eric, Eric Fry and Eric D, um, and Kathy, they might have more specific issues that might need some um, correction. Um, nice thing about mastery is that not only is it available for the instructor, but it's also available for the student to see. In addition to mastery, analytics is a big thing that he's uh, aware of. He wants to make sure that the content that he's posting is actually being accessed. So here you can see specifically the course analytics that are associated with it and even go right to a specific user and see what users are doing within the course. If a student isn't doing well, let's say, on a test that is delivered through Schoology, they notice that the student hasn't logged in for the last six weeks, well, that, that could explain things for, uh, for Dr. Lawrence. The other big thing, too, is that these, these kind of functionality, I'm not claiming that a lot of this is new, right? I'm, if you've been a learning management system user in the past, you might have had these kind of tool offerings. The differentiator with us is the accessibility of those tools. Like, all I had to do is click on analytics, and boom, that information is available. I click on mastery, and again, it's right there. There's not a specific pathway that I have to go on to, or just say, hopefully, that Dr. Lawrence will maybe stumble across it eventually. All this is front and center for the instructors to be able to leverage in their classroom. And Dr. Lawrence is. 